Welcome to my presentation on how to connect Zeek to Python. My name is Keith Jones. My website is just drkeithjones.com. And if you go there, um, actually we're going to go there in this video because I have some of the source code there. Um, but if you go there, I have all my social media accounts across the top and um, all my blogs and so forth. So if you want to connect with me, that's the place to go. Now, while you're here at YouTube, please, uh, if you like this video, like it. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. So that way you'll know when I start publishing more videos like this. Now here's an outline of what we're going to talk about. Um, first, we're going to talk about some prerequisites that you need to get this logic working, getting Zeek working with Python. And then there's a Python script and there's a Zeek script. So I'm going to walk through both. Um, line by line, it sounds like it's going to be a lot, but it's not. They're very short. Um, both of them are very short scripts. And then I'm going to demo them live for you so you can see what they look like in a command prompt. Now, in this video, I'll also have a link to my blog that has the actual written steps in it. So if I kind of gloss over something and you want more information, please go to that. Um, blog article and it'll have the most up-to-date detailed information um, the source code it's also linked through that blog article but there's source code available on github that I wrote for this as well so you don't have to actually copy and paste anything you can actually just get check things out if you want all right so the first thing I want to show you so this is the blog article that I wrote on how to connect Zeek to Python. And I step you through um, every little bit of it. And the reason why I did this is because someone asked me on one of my other YouTube videos on how to connect Zeek to Python, and I was going to give them the Zeek documentation link. And the Zeek documentation link contained code at the time that I wrote this. Um, it was to open broker on Zeek and then basically have Python connect to Zeek. And I didn't have a good way to show Zeek connecting to Python. So in my example here, I'm gonna show the Zeek side connecting to Python, which is there, I couldn't find a good example in the documentation. So that's why I wrote this. Um, the source code is just available here. You can click in there and it's just a uh, GitHub, but we're gonna walk through it in this article here. So the first thing we have is a Python script, okay? And for that Python script to run, it needs libraries. So we're to the spot where we're gonna talk about prerequisites. Now, here I gave you the link on how to go install the Python binding. So I recommend setting up Python virtual environment. That's how I use my environments. And I follow these instructions and um, was easily able to make my own environment um, just like this. So this works as advertised is what I'm saying. Now, I highlighted this for you. Broker changes through different versions of Zeek. So when you install these Python bindings, you have to have the right version of broker to match your version of Zeek. So let's say you know what your Zeek version is just by running Zeek dash dash version. And I just made up one here that I had installed at a time and it's 504. So let's just say you're running Zeek 504 and you want to know what broker version is running a Zeek 504. So what you can do is if you were to go, I already have this tab open. If you were to go to the Zeek project and drop down the branch and in the branches, they have all the tags as well, which has all the different versions. And if you select the version you're looking for, so in this case, V504, it'll show you the snapshot of that repo at that particular time. So stay with me. You go into the Zeek aux util directory, which is where broker is saved. And you can see there's a submodule broker here at such and such git hash. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It's basically a snapshot in time. 
So basically what I'm doing is I'm selecting my version in Z here, which then tells me what version of broker was installed at that time, which is in this weird looking hash, which humans can't use yet, but we can click in here. So now we're in this broker repo at that particular hash. And if you scroll down here, you see a version, click on that and you see a 2.3.5. So if we wanted to um, install it for this Zeek, which is what I use for this demo, I already did this up front. You can then go to broker, go over to the releases and then look for whatever version it is you want to download. I think ours was 235, so just download that one and use that for the install that we saw in the instructions earlier. All right, I hope that explains a little bit. I, I actually spell it out in words here for you too. All right, so once you download and install Broker in the Python bindings following those instruct instructions earlier, you're going to deal with this Python script. So this is it. It's not very big and there's a little bit of line breaking. So it's actually not even as big as it looks on your screen there. Um, I'm going to highlight some stuff for you. This area here sets up your broker in Python. It sets up the endpoint and then it tells it to listen on your local loopback address on port 60,000. I just picked that port randomly hoping that was open and it was on my computer. All right, this says run forever. Okay, just while true. This says pull the topic and the raw data. So topic is T, raw data is D. Out of the subscribe, like the subscription, which was instantiated up here, which is off the topic, the string slash topic slash test. So when we get data and we also get the topic when we get the data, but basically take that data, plug it into this Python event structure. So it basically, it builds it out for you. And I just named it Pong here. And I think it was cause mostly I copied a chunk of the documentation, forgot to change the name, but I also want to show you that it doesn't really matter what the name is because whatever events called from the Zeek side, and I'm going to show you that code in a second, but whatever events called from the Zeek side, we're able to actually pull it out with the dot name member function, which is really cool. So we can name it whatever we want. So in this case, when I messed up and I named it Pong, doesn't really matter because we can actually get the real name. So that, all this does the receiving of the message from Zeek. Here, where I'm kind of, um, there's a space in between. So if I highlight those, there's a space. I can't highlight it, but there's a space between that print statement and the Python results that you would put computation logic. Okay. So basically it's receiving data and I'll show you what type of data in a second. It would then have some type of, you'd put in some type of Python logic, you know, maybe some, um, you know, some threshold checking on, uh, um, on, uh, particular bytes passed or something along those lines, do some calculations and say, Oh, I want to take these calculations and send them back to Zeke. Well, the sending back to Zeke part is actually these two lines at the bottom. So above these two lines, that's where I was talking about. You'd put your computation logic. Okay, so these two lines, let me show you the first one here. What this does is it sets up, it basically creates this event called Python results. So in the Zeek side, we're going to fire this event called Python results. And in it, it gives the argument, the first argument that we received back up here with Pong. So the data we receive, it takes the first argument which you'll see we're only sending one. So we're basically sending all the arguments, but we're taking that argument and we're sending it back to Zeek just to prove that the data went from Zeek through Python and back through Zeek. Um, so once that's set up, once this object is set up in Python, you're able to actually take the endpoint and publish it 
to the topic and you're just publishing that object. So at that point, the event on the Zeke side will fire with the data that you gave it, which the data was here, the Pong args, the zero index of Pong args. Okay, so I talked to you visually through all this stuff you see in my blog here. So I'm just going to take you down to the bottom here and show you when you run this. Um, what we ended up doing is I send the con ID of every connection when the connection disappears in the state table. So basically the con ID, which is just that um, those four, um, you know, the source IP, source port, dust IP, dust port, that combination of that four tuple sends it from Zeek, takes it over to Python. Python then sends it back to Zeek, and you'll see it. Zeek also spits it back out. And this is just for demo purposes. You can put a lot better logic than this in there. But if you were to run this, you would see that when that those con logs came across, um, you're going to see that you know we received, and this is the Pong name, which is some test event. So it actually pulls out some test event for you. And these are the arguments over here. And that's just the con ID. The first one there is just that con ID that was sent from Zeek. All right, so let's talk about the Zeek script. And this is also very um, simple to talk through. Our test topic, we're going to stay all on the same topic here. So that's why we have these global variables of the test topic. Um, we also have this global variable of the event just because we are not handling it and we're actually um, publishing to it. So we have to have the global here and that's why it's there. But you see, like I said, the data we're passing around is just this con ID. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me walk backwards in the script for a second. When Zeke init's, it's going to connect to our Python program with that command I just highlighted. And you can see it's just localhost on port 60,000 TCP. And then it subscribes to our test topic, which is the same topic that is used on the Python side. Okay, so I hope you're with me so far. We got a connection state remove. So every time a connection is removed from the data that Zeke sees, it's going to take, it's going to publish over the broker to that test topic, some test event, which is the event that gets called in Zeek. And remember, that was the Pong name where it comes out with some test event. And it's also what gets printed to the screen as proof that it got data. And the data that it gives is just that con ID. So just C dollar sign ID. Okay, you remember when data gets sent from Python back to Zeek? but we have a event handler for that too. So we have an event Python results. And basically what happens is we get the same data back. So there you go. That's the structure. And all I'm doing to prove that it went through this chain of Zeek Python back to Zeek is I'm just printing it out. So you should see that con ID then get printed to the console when you run it on a PCAP. And if everything works, this is what the logic should look, look, look like when it gets printed. So again, this is the demo and the structure of going from, from data in Zeek Python back to Zeek asynchronously, right? You just kind of fire the data off. Something gets processed in Python and it gets um, accepted back in Zeek and something happens. Now I've had questions about tying this into spicy generally i wouldn't tie python into spicy because spicy needs to happen really quickly because it's parsing um, the bits and bytes a lot faster and it's it's happening all the time even on connections that aren't identified as that protocol as they try to test that protocol so what i recommend is probably the best you could do if you want to tie this into spicy is create an event that is hooked to a unit that you parse in spicy. And then since that event fires when that unit, when something happens to that unit, assuming it's like 
done for parsing. Uh, meaning the done hook because it's done parsing. It would fire a particular event that you create and then you could take that event and um, uh, you know use it in this, this whole same manner that we did. Uh, instead of using connection state remove, we use our new event that would be tied to that spicy unit. I hope that makes more sense. All right, now we're down to the demo time. Let me get you in the right screen. So here we have our broker test Python. And what I'm gonna do is just run that. Cause you remember, this is why I probably explained it out of order to you, but I explained the Python first because that's gotta be running. That's the listener. That's sort of the daemon in this um, method that we're setting it up. In the method in the Zeek documentation, it kind of gets sets up the opposite way where the Python scripts connect to the Zeek side. So uh, this is just another way of doing that. So what we did is I, I ran the Python and remember now it's in that true loop or while true loop and it's sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting for uh, connections to come from Zeek. So what I did here is I have a Z, I'm running the Zeek command on this example PCAP and I'm doing some backnet um, analysis lately. And if that's something you're interested in, um, I have made a backnet uh, video and that is something that you can access. I'll link it to the top right now. You can go through Zeek and do analysis on backnet. So this is just one of those PCAPs that I used in my research for backnet, if you're wondering where it comes from. And then what I did is I'm running this broker test. And if you're wondering why I'm running it out of the directories and so forth, that's just because Zeek makes a crud load of logs and I don't want to pollute my other directories. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And if I run it and we see anything print out, it means data went from Zeek to Python and back to Zeek. So it went through that whole chain. If nothing prints out, that means it failed and I'll have to redo this whole video. Yay, I don't have to redo the video. All right, so you see it got results back from the Python and it looks like our con ID is just like we've grown to love if you've done any type of Zeek work. Just to make sure everything worked correctly, let's switch over to our Python side. And you can see it received this some test event. Remember, that's the event we fired from Zeek into Python. And the data it got back, or the data it sent over, was this con ID. Well, the con ID was the first of the arguments that it sent over. All right. So again, how do you get to all this? You just click through my blog here and I have it linked in the YouTube video. Um, and then I have the source code so you can just pull it straight down and just run it on a PCAP and just kind of see what everything looks like. So again, I want to remind you, if you like this video, please like it. And if you like to see more videos like this, click subscribe because it helps me move up in the search results when people are searching for Zeek open source videos like this. So I really appreciate you joining and I'm going to put some links here at the end. I have a true crime podcast that I work on. I have other videos that I work on with uh, Zeke and other cybersecurity topics. And I have a whole channel that you can subscribe to as well. So um, here's some links that you can explore at the end of this video if you're interested in more. And thanks again for uh, joining us on this video and I'll hope to see you on the next. Thanks. Bye.